Since I started making videos, they've always sort of materialized in different ways. Some of them have been like BMX and skate videos. Some have been short film style things. I've done some stop motion animation. The, the, the main thing I did all the time was come up with ideas, little concepts, little plans, things to make the video about, things to make the films, and that's always what I enjoy. That's my background as a creative has always been ideas driven. It's the creation that pushes my technical abilities, that lets me learn things and do new stuff. And I've really, really been feeling like I haven't been doing a lot of that. So this year for Halloween, I decided I wanna put one of my ideas into motion because it was a deadline, so I had to do it. So I had this idea basically like, we always carve pumpkins, but what if the pumpkin decided to strike back and that's what the video was about so I gave my friends Tim and Dan a shout and I was like dudes this is the idea what do you reckon pumpkin on your head running around the forest with a knife smoke bombs you know they were never gonna say no to that Dan and I sat down went through the idea we debated a few different techniques for doing stuff to work out this shot is an external shot outside in my house all right External means outside, for, re for reference points. <laughs> Going forward, yeah. if I say external, <laughs> we stick the knife into its into the side of its head. <clears throat> That's when it goes and lights up. Pretty comfortable with most of that part. And then once we move into the forest, it's kind of going to be a mixture of already light <laughs> and smoke grenades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stab, and then I'll stop. And then you'll need to reach in. You'll need to give the pumpkin a reach around turn the light on and come out of shot then as then i say to tim go i'll move the knife a little bit as he goes jumps back so there's a light inside yeah there'll be a lighter light inside there nearly bought a co2 fire extinguisher oh i'm just i just googled dry ice yep how to make you need a fire extinguisher <laughs> yeah what a cloth bag there's no way you need a co2 fire extinguisher this is ridiculous there's got to be an easy way how to make dry ice Chemistry. On the cheap. Basic bitches making dry ice. A crazy Russian Oh, the Bunsen burner. <laughs> oh, he's amazing, this guy. Welcome, his safety is yeah. my number one priority. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my laboratory. Where safety is number one priority. And today, I'm going to show you how to make dry ice. All you need is CO2 fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Why do we need a car, a friggin' thing? That would be cool for the video, though. Cool. Do we get one of these? Look, pieces of dry ice. Amazon. <laughs> CO2 fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy them for 20 quid from Amazon. There has to be a shop we can down there and get one. Where can you I just borrow clubs. one really quickly? <laughs> if you haven't seen the video yet, I'll stick a link in the description. It's called Car If You Dare. What do you think of that name? It's the best I could come up with at the time, to be honest. All right, so this is us filming for the um, this pumpkin video thing that I've I kind of made. So I've asked Tim and Dan. Tim's shooting some hoops. Oh, it's good. There's three of us involved in this. Dan's gonna take some photos of some of it, and we're gonna make this little short feature. So it'll be like five. All right, I got myself right. We're working out the little bits and pieces of how we're gonna make the pumpkin come to life in the air, uh, because that's where it'll be bright enough to play with the smoke bombs. Of the pumpkin running. Right, or the pumpkin space. <laughs> I'm really conscious about running uh, around in a boiler suit with a pumpkin head and a well, knife. Uh, <laughs> first and foremost, were you on your own? <laughs> in my mind, I'm going to throw a black cloth over the table and use a, like a wooden pole to lift the pumpkin. Problem one is going to be this. I have to raise the table or something to push the pole. I haven't worked that out yet. After a bit of a, after a bit of discussion, we reckon. Doing it outside is probably, it's probably not the best bet because we need to control a bit of light. Move it from here into the, in the middle of um, working on my van, by the way. This is why, oh, that's why the garage is a total mess. I'm cutting things. And but there's a part where we have to move the pumpkin. So we need to get in from underneath it. So we're gonna try and use like one of these workbenches and Tim's gonna show the action. That, <laughs> that's, that's what we're gonna prod it from underneath. Literally it's like we change the plan again because the, this is the kind of frame that I, I want. It's, there's a lot of artistic difference going on here. That was a great, that was a great photo by me. But there's a part where I need to collect the pumpkin. So I gonna run. I think if you if your camera angle carries on moving, so when I lift this, you just carry on drifting to about here. Three, two, one, go. Forgot the head recorder. That's how I like to do it. One shot. Just push the door to here. Right, that's it. Right? So you're pushing forwards. So you walk forwards as we walk in. And then the Dan will slam, slam the door quickly. 
pill, you need to be like, right, can't alarm. try not being a baby about that. All right? So if you, like that, yeah. then we'll cut to me falling down. All right, no, you're going to walk in first. Action. There you go, go. Oh, I got um, totally caned on the side of the door. And action. Sorry, what are you doing? Buying stuff on Amazon. Filming's come to a temporary halt because Noah's decided to play Call of Duty on the phone and Tim is buying triggers for his phone. They look like this. We're not gonna cut the top off, continuous. Like so, do you just wanna come in close here while we do a couple of things? I ain't cut, flip it. Ooh. Easy on the pumpkin. The, the, the pumpkin's gone on Tim's head, obviously. Because, <laughs> well, I wasn't going to do that, but I just think he'd make a good pumpkin. So <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at nothing else. Head, I guess. My nose is crushed. <laughs> right, so you need a nose gap, right? Then you'll pull up, and I'll bang the knife in. Yeah. So I think if we take that cloth, cut a hole, it, put it over and out. So, okay. so we need to bring the pumpkin to life. So what we're gonna need to do is put this pole under the black cloth. Dan's gonna hide, pull the shot forward. And then I'm gonna put this lighter light inside it. Cheat it a bit, a little bit of sleight of hand. Film a static shot. Everyone pause, turn the light on. Boof, boost the thing up as the light comes on. That's the idea. And then I'll cut that middle section out of us footering about. But as long as no one moves, it should work fine. Pole, though, yeah, so that you're right about the tripod thing. So I'll need to bracket that off. Dan suggested putting the light on top of the tripod. So I've got to use the smaller lighter light, the cube, and it'll just screw onto top of a light stand. Huh? Look at that. Just put it in that one, so then it's facing the back of it. Because the light's going to press against the roof of it. Good point, Dan. See? That's why you're here. Yeah. Continuity not, and special effects. Not for Call of Duty. So you just need to be in the middle, mm -hmm. from here, then just go, and as you go out, so it's there, and that's what's behind it. Whenever right Tim down. has this on his head, he's not going to have a light on inside. Yeah, but then you'll be wrong No, no, he will. We'll put the light inside with him. Oh, ready? fling yourself back. You're going to this way. I'm going to drop it there. You ready? Okay. Yeah, that should be. So we've got to change location now. Bucket shot. Okay, into the forest now. We're going into the forest with this. Um, this is for the next bunch of the shots that we need to do. That are like all the running sections. <laughs> B-roll. Oh, is this some funny heavy? I think he can shoot. I'm obviously not gonna no. do it. <laughs> Dan's very safety conscious. I yeah. put the drone up. And mess them in the middle of the desert. We kind of need that low light as the sun's coming through the trees. They call it the golden hour if you don't know about photography or videography. <laughs> How'd you find out? Dan told me. <laughs> These shots are all going to be the bits of us running through the forest. Um, and then Dan's going to let us some smoke bombs, potentially fly a drone. You know, all the safe stuff you should do in a forest. <laughs> no! Just run, there's no, well there's people, there's not a lot of people. I know, but dude, it's so embarrassing. But I saw it because it's... There's not going to be people there, and it's bright, so it's not going to be scary. Yes. <laughs> okay, change of location. There's some sort of like Halloween walk going on for some reason in this forest. Uh, agility, that's our skill. <laughs> Go away. This is like the shot that sets up me running into the woods. He needs to put a pumpkin on his... Really? He needs to put a pumpkin on his head, all right, and hold a knife. And we're in a... Well, we're in a housing area, really. It doesn't matter if it, doesn't matter if it rips. No, but... <laughs> Like even if you just rip it, like it just go. Here we are. Nah, here we are. Okay, go. Can you come? Should we go? Is it this? That's not going on. Oh my god. What's fully going on? Bro? Oh fuck. Oh man, that's disgusting. It's like, it's like. Do you know when you watch the old original James Bond films and he comes out in like a lycra swimming suit? That's okay. Open as well. I, think. I, can't, I can't. Can we just appreciate this? <laughs> Legit. We didn't nick that. So he can't move in the in the boiler suit. Can't you just leave that? You have, you have I, put it over jeans. I can't. Yeah. Well, that, it, it's, that's not the issue. I can tell you, I'm fine with this. Are you fine? You're fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's me, no. So what are you gonna put? This, <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. 
<laughs> we need the light. No, we don't need the light because it's from behind. Like, like that. The knife like sticking out so you can really see it. And then I'm just going to run off. Okay. <laughs> I bought him lunch. I bought him lunch. I feel like lunch. a Ryan Say who's always complaining. He is doing a lot of Ryan sighing today. <gasps> Ryan sigh. That's cooler looking. That's cool. I think we could fly the drone chasing you as well. I think it'd be class. Yes. And that's... Oh, nice. Kind of like that. If you just want battery for this, yeah. Um, there should be a bunch of them. That was, a, that was a good fight. Great. Okay, recording, go. <laughs> I could feel that drone right behind my ear. We're in the middle of the woods, there's no one around. And this old man just appears in like full camouflage gear with a bucket. And we're like, hey? He's walking away. What a nut. He's like, all right, lads. We're like, all right. What do you, what do you want? And he's just like, just he just leans in. Why did he lean in next to you he, he and so breathe in your ear? He was so close to your face. It was wildly uncomfortable. <laughs> we found a nice remote remote place, and we're trying to shoot these photos, these video clips. And then this woman comes in. All right, these two ladies with the cameras and soft boxes and a bunch of kids, and starts setting up. There's Tim. That's where we're setting our shot up. They walked in and set theirs up over there, like 100, 100 feet away, 100 feet away. This entire place that goes on and on and on for ages. Where should we set up? Let's just set up next to those guys. Stop. Can you see anything? That looks good. I'm gonna go, no, no, and then, and then just we'll go for this like, shing, shing, or don't fucking stab me. And then like lift the knife up and stab into the ground near me. Oh, oh shit. shit, the fucking bed. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so, okay, oh shit, right up. Right. Now put your head down to me, not the knife, just your head. I think, I think that's us, yeah. Oh, we, take a we might as well. But that's kind of a wrap on now. We've got all the shots we needed and we're gonna do any like what any sane human being would do and stick a smoke bomb in in the pumpkin's head and burn it. Oh, Oh no! Put the pumpkin in! Yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me it was a double ender! No, he didn't! He definitely didn't! He definitely didn't. <laughs> oh, there you go! There it is! That's the shot right there! Holy fuck, that's unreal! Are we back lights? Just. That actually burnt my hand! Because I didn't fucking know Daniel! That was how we captured and filmed everything, and then when we were finished, like I stuck it in the final cut, and I went onto Epidemic Sound, downloaded some music tracks, but then I also downloaded like a gazillion sound effects. Right? This is not an ad for Epidemic, by the way. I pay a subscription fee, $9.99 a month. This month, I made the most out of it. I was like, I'll have you, and you, and you. Oh, body hit, I'll have that. The whole collection of horror sound effects, just download and load. I must have downloaded like 50 different sound effects. Filmed this kind of in sequence, bar one or two shots that I had to sh shift about. But anyway, yeah, the trick to this was getting it right in edit. It was a pretty simple 
shoots. Timeline was pretty linear. You know, apart from the sound effects, color grade, music, a couple of simple things like that was pretty straightforward. It just, yeah, big shout out to Tim and Dan for helping me. They were shooting loads of it. Dan was doing drone stuff. They were both doing behind the scenes photos. Tim had a pumpkin on his head. I can't imagine what his head smelled like the next day. I mean, I assume he washed it. I assume he washed his head. The key thing here for me is I had fun making it with my friends, doing something fun, and I was happy with the end product. So yeah, if you haven't watched it, there's a link to it in the description. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes and uh, catch you in the next one. Oh, by the way, I recorded this once in the studio already, and when I watched it back, I didn't realize that the side of the tripod leg was touching the table. So every time I moved the table, it wobbled, and every time it wobbled, it sent this like vibration up into the camera, and you heard this like, tick, tick, tick. I was like, oh my god. When I watched it back, I was like, what have I done? <laughs> so that's why I recorded it in this room. Excuse the 1970s uh, futon. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that.